We have a yep. program that we teach, of course, our online yeah. prenatal and postnatal program. And I love for people to do that. And if they have additional symptoms or issues, it's always great to additionally see an in-person therapist. Of course. Maybe you see a BRM pro. We train professionals to assess. Maybe you see a pelvic floor PT. Pelvic floor PTs, OTs, they can do internal work, which is nice. Yes. But there's a lot you can do beyond that as well. Hi, I'm Rachel Manns, owner of The Natural Birth Site and this podcast, The Natural Birth Talk. Here, you'll learn all about different natural aspects of birth, pregnancy, and postpartum. Remember, none of this information should take the place of a care provider and is not medical advice. Birth is not a medical emergency. Thanks for listening. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Natural Birth Talk. Today, I'm here with Lindsay McCoy, and she is going to tell us all about the pelvic floor. We're going to do a lot of chatting on that. But before we get started, I want to let her introduce herself. Hello. Hey, I'm, I'm excited to be here with you. So like you said, I'm Lindsay McCoy. I am an exercise physiologist turned birth doula. So I've been doing this since uh, I started birth work in 2009. And I've attended hundreds of births. And now I really focus on preparing the body for birth mm-hmm. and um, biomechanics of the pelvis, the pelvic floor. And so the, really the bulk of my work is the body ready method, which uh-huh. is an online program, pre and postnatal exercise and movement, but it's really more than just exercise. It's really about preparing your body to have a more efficient functional experience. And so when I started in this world, this field, since we're talking uh-huh. about pelvic floor today, it was all just do your Kegels. And the childbirth mm-hmm. education program I was teaching at the time was like, you know, telling me to tell people to do hundreds of Kegels a day. And Mm -hmm. as a former exercise physiologist, I was like, no, (laughs) I'm not going to teach that. Like that's not helpful for birth. It's going to actually possibly potentially make it more challenging. And so I'm kind of a rebel and I (laughs) never will do something just because it's the, what I'm told. And so I really started realizing that there was more to birth prep than hundreds of Kegels a day. Yeah. I, I Yeah. I love that you just said that because I mean, you say that you're a rebel, but really you're just like, Oh, what is the word? of course, of course it's, of course the word is like slipping my mind right now, but you're just, I'm evidence-based, right? Like yeah. it's, apparently it's, it's like, it's a rebel to be evidence-based sometimes in this well, field yeah. <laughs> or to expect something different than what you're taught or to expect right. that there could be more than what we currently know or what we're right. currently taught. Um, totally. So I love that you took that, you know, that instinct that you had and you were like, this isn't right. Yeah. And then (laughs) went ahead and expanded it. So I do want to jump right in then to how did your business, the body ready method come about? Like what made you realize the pelvic floor is important in pregnancy, birth and postpartum? I mean, you kind of mentioned that, but go a little bit deeper for me. Yeah. Yeah. So it started. So when I, so I went to school for exercise physiology, Mm -hmm. physiology, and I assumed that I was going to be, you know, working with maybe athletes as a former athlete. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started, you know, after post-grad, I started just training lots of people. And of Uh course, as the one female on staff, I got all the females and I got Uh all the pregnant folks and I got all the people who had just had a baby and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so I really needed to know more. I was also starting to have my own children at that time. My first was in 2007, right after graduation. And I was just, um, both my own experience weren't what I hoped them to be. I was having my own issues with incontinence post first birth. You know, you go uh-huh. to the, the trampoline park and you're like, this is not like, how it used to be. And I can't so jump I, with my kid I, anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so I needed to know from a personal, from personally, but then I also, so after my first birth in 2007, I was mm-hmm. like, this is not the way Ina Mae Gaskin told me that it was supposed to be in her right? book. So she's, you know, Ina Mae. Of she's course. like the midwife, you know. Um, and rebel in her own right. Yeah, and yeah. it was not how it, how she told me it was supposed to be in her book. So I needed to know why I'm a, I'm a scientist, mm-hmm. I'm a researcher. And so I did a lot of soul searching, a lot of researching and had chose a very different thing in my second birth in 2009. Mm-hmm. And I had that birth at home and it was just beautiful and quick and yeah. amazing. And I was like, oh my gosh, why do people not know that birth can be like this? And right. not that I think everyone should birth like me, but I just had this experience and I was like, I'm leaving exercise behind. I'm becoming a doula. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the very first birth that I attended in 2009 was for, I was with them for, I think, 40 hours. Of course. I ended in a cesarean. I was, I was intuitively, I thought I was leaving exercise behind, but mm-hmm. I was wearing, it was in the winter. I was wearing a scarf and I remember taking off the scarf and starting to like jiggle and sift and shake. And, mm-hmm. and I was trying all these different things that I had maybe heard about or thought about yeah. and, and it wasn't enough in this situation. Um, Mm -hmm. and like, we can't control everything about birth, of course, but I think deep down, I thought like, Oh, if people just make different choices, everything will be easy. And I realized Mm -hmm. there was a disconnect. There was a disconnect between Mm -hmm. the birth world and the physiology exercise, body mechanics world. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had my, my foot in both doors. And I realized like I needed to bring these together somehow. There was this yeah. disconnect that was happening and we weren't speaking to one, like these two yeah. modalities were not speaking. And it was like, we train our bodies for every other physical feat we do. Uh huh. Like we are going to run a marathon. You don't just sign up and do it the next day. Right. But yeah, why do we think my oh, sister don't worry actually about did do that? And I was like, that was oh. really dumb. And she actually loved it. She's crazy. That's not a good example. Well, I mean, but here's, it's the deal. Play. <laughs> here's the deal. People do that every day. And do some people have a fine birth or a fine like like you could run a marathon right. the next day and probably be fine, but most people are gonna either get injured or they're gonna hate it. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. there's gonna be someone I just that's quit. like, I, I didn't would prepare. just quit. <laughs> I, I just yeah, quit. <laughs> some people are gonna be like, I didn't prepare for birth and mine went great. Well, that's yeah, cool. Exactly. Amazing. I'm so right. happy for you. But most people do need. They do prepare. need preparation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, especially with our modern lives, like the right. things that we do, the sitting all the time, the, you know, lack of natural movements, um, even some of the workouts a lot of us do like are so not true. conducive to the, the mechanics that birth that, so that are required in birth. So exactly. With all of that being said, this perfectly leads into my next question, which is what are some signs that mom would benefit from pelvic floor work? And I already know the answer to this, but is pelvic floor (laughs) physical therapy the only option? Yeah. So, okay. So the first one, ways that you can know you could benefit from it. So we all have pelvic floors. If you're a human, you have a pelvic floor. It doesn't matter your gender. We all have pelvic floors. And while Mm -hmm. the cis male pelvic, like they, their organs will not prolapse. If they have an issue, they will Mm -hmm. actually rest on their prostate. So, so men, cis men with pelvic floor issues, will see prostate issues, erectile dysfunction, et cetera. So I just want to throw it out there Mm -hmm. because I think sometimes Mm -hmm. we think it's only a cis female thing of like, oh, I'm the, we're the only ones with pelvic floors. We all have pelvic floors. So that's the first thing. The next thing. And so if you are pregnant, Mm -hmm. Your pelvic floor, so the pelvic floor is the bottom of the core system. So Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we think that's why Kegels don't work as well as we think because it's not addressing, I think of it as like all the gears of a machine is Uh this core system. The pelvic floor is one gear of the machine. So we have the pelvic floor at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We have the diaphragm, our breathing muscle at the top. We have the core Mm -hmm. in the front. We have some back muscles in the back. Yeah. And so what a lot of us do is we take out that pelvic floor gear, we polish it up. We're like, oh, that's where the symptom is. Polish it up, stick it back in. If it's Mm -hmm. not coordinating with the rest of that system, it's not really working. So any you have to take the whole approach to it. Whereas the Kegels, unless you're like actively involving the rest of the muscles with your Kegel, it's not going to address properly. It's not going to address. Yeah. I mean, Kegels have their place. I'm not Uh anti-Kegel, but if if you're just tightening the bottom of that Uh system, especially because most people actually already have a too tight pelvic floor. Yeah. Then we're just adding tension to tension, which is just, if you think about like a rubber band, that's too tight. Mm -hmm. And now I want a baby to go pass through that area. Or you think of like the example I like to give is like a bicep muscle. Like if you Uh flex your muscles, like you're showing your guns, I don't Uh know. This is not a visual, so you can't see me doing (laughs) it. But like, if you flex your muscle and now it's very tight and now Uh I can't extend my arm, is that a functional bicep? No, right. and not so, at all. So I know that wasn't your question. So I'll get to your question. That's okay. So, it's so important we can't information it. to understand though. <laughs> yeah, we kind of have to have the base knowledge. So so with that said, when you are pregnant, mm-hmm. that system has a lot more demands on it. So you mm-hmm. think about this core, this core system, think about your intra-abdominal cavity, and it's filled with pressure. It's filled with your organs, it's filled with your uterus. And mm-hmm. now that uterus is getting bigger because the baby's growing, you know, it's expanding. And so there's less space for all that pressure. That's Mm -hmm. why people tend to see more symptoms as a result. Like 
oh, I didn't have incontinence and now I'm pregnant. I'm having incontinence. Well, there's right. less space in that room, so yeah. to speak. And so things that may not have come as a symptom before, doesn't mean that that pelvic floor was like at its best because there was no uh-huh. symptoms. It's like now we've added something to that system that was already maybe dysregulated and now it's showing up as a system, as a right. symptom. And so I find, I believe that everyone who is pregnant should be aware of and working on something with their pelvic floor because it, yeah. it not only does it need to have more demands on it now mm-hmm. and the body will adapt like things like the rib cage expands, of course, the abdominal wall expands. We're trying to make that room a little bit bigger so that, you know, we don't have these symptoms. So our bodies yeah. are amazing, but we need to learn how to coordinate. So pregnancy, just everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and then absolutely postpartum, everyone, like yep. your body just went through a big event. And so it's yep. really good to optimize that. But then if you're experiencing painful sex, if you're experiencing incontinence, if you're experiencing Mm -hmm. heaviness in your pelvic floor, if you're experiencing Mm -hmm. pain in your abdomen, in your, in your hips, like those are Mm -hmm. all signs that something in that symptom is not working or coordinating well. And so there's a lots of things that you can do to address this. Mm -hmm. Um, Pelvic floor physical therapy is a really great option. And it's really great to see someone in person. There's also pelvic floor OTs. Um, Mm -hmm. Just there's a lot of different types of pelvic floor therapists. I think we can get really stuck in like, this is the one way, but OTs are also great because they really bring in like the, a holistic look at as well. And so there's also, um, fit pros that are pelvic floor trained. So there's mm-hmm. some things that you can do with an in like a program. And we have a yep. program that we teach, of course, our online yeah. prenatal and postnatal program. And I love for people to do that. And if they have additional symptoms or issues, it's always great to additionally see an in-person therapist. Of course. Maybe you see a BRM pro, we train professionals to assess. Maybe you see a pelvic floor PT, pelvic floor PTs, OTs, they can do internal work, which is nice. Yes. But there's a lot you can do beyond that as well. I think sometimes some, some people can get really stuck in, again, it's like the Kegel approach to get stuck Mm -hmm. in the internal work is the only thing I need. Mm -hmm. And it's really great to release those tissues, but, but we can also do a lot with coordination without ever putting any fingers in the vagina. Yeah. So I want to throw that out there. Yeah. Well, it's just nice that there's a lot of options, which is what I was really kind of getting at with that is, you know, if you can see an in-person pelvic floor physical therapist or OT, it's definitely a fantastic option. I know there's yoga teachers and things like that that are trained in the pelvic floor, but for some people, it's just not realistic or it's too hard or it's too much to leave the house or there's no one near them in their area especially in those, you know, more rural areas. Right. So there are online programs like the body ready method and yoga teachers on YouTube who are trained in the pelvic floor. And and so there are a lot of other options. Um, There are a lot of options. I will say that the pelvic floor is very trendy right now. And so I have, so you want to be a conscious consumer because there is a lot of stuff thrown up on YouTube and TikTok Mm -hmm. and Instagram. And like, I would say, just look at some, like trust your gut, but also like, right everyone's an expert these days. And so it it can be tricky sometimes to navigate information. And so sometimes I would just, I would just say to like, just be a conscious consumer of some of those YouTubes and things. Cause I have seen stuff that I'm like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of good resources as well. You know, I do agree. If you can see someone in person, I think that's really helpful. I saw someone in person and it definitely made a big difference for me. But like I said, sometimes it's just it's not an option for whatever reason. Yeah, and, and there's virtual those... as well. Like even true. I know PTs do it. I uh we have our BRM pros do virtual sessions. And what the virtual sessions are doing is they're really adre- like looking at your tension patterns, looking at your movement patterns, looking at your mm. your resting position of your muscles, what is overused, what is underused, and how can we get so the so how I like to explain it is kind of like the group project that is your body and all uh-huh. of your parts are kind of working together to support your body, support your pelvic floor functioning well, support, you know, your cores, uh, separation, you know, supporting everything. And if yeah. some of those parts are overworking, then other parts mm-hmm. are underworking. And then we get this disconnect and this imbalance. And a lot of times what people do is they just go and they see that overworker mm-hmm. and they go to a massage therapist or they go to, they go and get that released. Like this tissue mm-hmm. is too tight. Let's release it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. But if we haven't got the underworker working and doing their job, <laughs> which we have to do through exercise and movement, not just right. through a hands-on release, then that overworker is going to go, well, that was fun. That was cool. But like, no one's doing this job that's supporting this pelvis or whatever it is. 
So yeah. I'm going to tighten right back up. Yeah. So, so it's kind of a waste of time. It is. Yeah. And so you really do have to take like a whole body approach to right. it, or at least a whole core approach yeah, to it. Yeah. Um, so you explained it kind of like gears in a system. I always think of it as kind of a cylinder, you know, yeah. the, the pelvic floor is the bottom, diaphragm's the top, and then we've got the abdomen and back muscles and it's this cylinder. And, you know, if you take a deep belly breath, you can like feel that cylinder or that gear, you can feel it expand all of it. You know, mm-hmm. you can feel the pelvic floor relax. You can feel the diaphragm move in your belly and back muscles respond. And, you know, so listeners, if you don't believe us, just try it. Like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Just take that deep belly breath and you'll be able to feel how it all works together. So it's really important to, like you said, not just address the pelvic floor with a Kegel, but to, to address that entire core, that entire system. Um, and I'll take it a step further and, and address truly the whole body because everything kind of ties in to our spine and our nervous system that's part of that core stay with us we'll be right back hey listener do you want a comprehensive yet concise and inexpensive online at your own pace natural birth education course to help you prepare for natural birth pregnancy and postpartum then check out the description below for that and our helpful products guide now back to the show Yeah. And that, that, what you're, what you're talking about is, um, it, the, the term for it is tensegrity. So tensegrity okay. is this, it's this idea that, and the way I like to think about it, like if you ever, oh, I have a pelvis or a, I have like a, oh, I guess no one can see it, but I have like I a know. skeleton <laughs> model behind me. So like skeleton, like think of the skeleton model that you had in high school or you've seen skeleton uh-huh. models. Uh, and even that song, like the leg bones connected to the hip bones connected. Uh-huh. And we think all of our bones are connected to each other, but actually our, all of our bones are essentially kind of floating yeah. in space being held together by our soft tissues. Yes. And so if, so it's this whole like, and, and even if you think about it with a shirt, like if, if there's a tension somewhere in the body. That's mm-hmm. going to have a global response. And so sometimes the, the issue the shows up. The body. Yeah. Sometimes the issue shows up as like, I have pain in my right hip mm-hmm. and I can trace when I look at someone's body and their tension patterns, we can mm-hmm. actually find that, that tension and that, that pain is a result of an imbalance in the opposite shoulder. Maybe. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it's not always where it is. Isn't where you think it is just because that's where yeah. the pain is coming. Doesn't mean that's where the problem the started starts and our yeah. modern medical society likes to slap band-aids on sim- sis- on symptoms, right? Yep. Like they're like, oh, you have pain here. Well, I'll stretch there. Or, oh, mm-hmm. you have pain. You have a dysfunction in your pelvic floor. Okay, let's just do Kegels. Mm-hmm. Like let's just spot treat that issue versus address the root cause, which is going right. to help you eliminate the issue, not just band-aid the symptom. Of course, yes. So, so what, I mean, what kind of tips do you have? I mean, I know, so for me, like I already mentioned, I saw a pelvic floor physical therapist. She was fantastic. My struggle is yeah. actually doing the things she told me to do. Oh yeah. That's hard. <laughs> you know what? That's why we get when, when PTs and OTs and yoga teeth, when they get pregnant themselves, they tend to, <laughs> to do our program because they trust it. They know that we mm-hmm. get it and they can just hit play. And just Mm -hmm. follow along. They're like, I know all that I'm supposed to do, but it's really boring to sit there and do these three exercises. They want to hit play and just flow through something. And so that's, that can be helpful to get like something like a program that you just hit play and just go. So you don't have to think about it. But I Mm -hmm. also find, so here's the deal. It's not just about exercise because if you think about your life and your day, here's like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. How long do we really exercise? Like 30 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe. Yeah. And then or like, like, I have all minutes. these kids. You said you're homeschool. Like we don't have yeah. time. we don't have time. It's always a time thing. And so this is me. I'm in, I don't know if you know the enneagram, but I'm an enneagram three, which means okay. I like to be, it's a personality type. Yeah. I like to be efficient. Uh-huh. I don't want to do something else going to help me. I have four yes. kids. I don't have time right. for stuff that doesn't work. And so for me, that's why I love learning about body alignment uh-huh. and like how to hold your body throughout the day. Because if I'm washing dishes or if I'm picking up the 50 million toys that the kids left Mm -hmm. in the living room, whatever, or making them do it, but teaching them, whatever, (laughs) doesn't matter. Whatever I'm doing, I want to be doing that better. Like I want to learn how to move my pelvis. Like so often when we're reaching and picking stuff off the, off Mm -hmm. the floor, we're doing it 
in the same way every time we're flexing our spine, rounding our yeah. back in the same way, which that isn't a bad way to do it. But if that's the only way you have available, yeah. your pelvis isn't moving. And what if every mm-hmm. time I'm picking the toys off the floor, I'm hinging my pelvis and creating a lengthening, strengthening load to my pelvic floor? Yeah. That's amazing. Then I don't have to just... So, so we, I call the exercises like the lab, so to speak, uh-huh. so you're learning in the lab, how to move better all through the day. Yes. And then you don't have to even add something new to your day. You're just doing your day better. Yeah. Which is so That's important. And that goes back to where I was saying our modern lives are not exactly. conducive to, yeah. you know, healthy public floors really. And, but we could learn how to make them conducive. And exactly. something I always tell my postpartum moms, especially the really fit ones that are like, when can I exercise again? I'm like, listen. Mm. Did you stand up from the couch with your baby in your arms today? Great. You did a squat. Like, <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's, it can be really psychological that return to fitness time. And I like for people to know with that, that, um, if you will be, if, because let's be real, like the six week medical clearance exercise is, is complete mm-hmm. BS. And yeah. we, a lot of people injure themselves postpartum, injure their pelvic floors postpartum by starting too quickly. Yeah. And not getting the proper progressive guidance. Think about any mm-hmm. other big thing you did, a big medical event or physical event. Te- there tends to be like a very progressive um, approach to going uh-huh. back, return to exercise. And after you give birth, there's like, oh, you're good. Six weeks, you're clear. Go to CrossFit. Right. And it's like, um, probably not. Yeah. But, we need progressions. But exactly. Well, and like you said, just learning how to do things throughout your day that naturally just help the pelvic floor is a really great option, especially for those early postpartum moms who are trying to progress back in. It's like, okay, like I said, you stood up from the couch. Great. You did a squat. Like, let's teach you how to stand up in a, you know, in a helpful way. Or like you said, doing the dishes, which I mean, I hope no one, you know, (laughs) less than four or six weeks postpartum is doing the dishes. I hope somebody else is doing that for them. But let's be real. They probably are. I know. <laughs> a lot I of people. hate that, yeah. but yeah. I'm just going to live in my little world and pretend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, but you know, doing those. Pro- yeah, go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Just doing those little daily movements or just incorporating it into your day. Those little Huge. things can be so helpful. Yeah. And our postpartum program, the reason why our post- postpartum program starts the day after birth, not because we're giving you like intense exercise then, uh-huh. but because all the other postpartum programs I could find were six weeks plus. Yeah. And people need guidance for those six weeks and they need progressions there. And we yeah. are do people a really big in service by doing nothing for six weeks. That's there true. can be. So the daily seven protocol we have is, is literally, like you said, movements and Things that are addressing the postures they tend to find in that time. What are they yes. doing? They're the nursing. They're hunching for the breastfeeding. Oh, yeah. And so I'm we got to so guilty find, of that. We all are guilty of that. And so we all need these progressions, safe ways of reconnecting with your core mm-hmm. and your pelvic floor. And so yeah. I just think it's really, it's yeah. really sad what the lack of guidance that pregnant and postpartum mm-hmm. people are given. But yeah, change is coming. Yeah. Well, really? and I always, I always say, you know, 100, 200 years ago, I mean, not that long ago, we all grew up around birth because, you know, all of the women of the village were there, the town were there to help, including like younger children or, or, you know, we were all there and we grew up around it and our movements were just more natural in general, like gardening and cleaning on our hands and knees and things like that. But then I love that you take that that approach starting right after the birth, because you are right. We don't have any guidance anymore. We don't know what we're doing anymore. And you start at day one. And I think that's really helpful, especially for those moms who are eager to get back into fitness because they can feel like they are doing something little, even if it's just like, let's work on your breathing, like breathe from your, your belly, don't breathe from your chest, like little things like that. Or like you said, posture, I think that's, you know, definitely really helpful, not just physically, but mentally for a lot of moms. Yeah, for sure. And there. actually the one of our breathing things, this might be a fun one for them to just try at home now because it's the best okay. best breath for pregnancy anytime. So so there's three ways you can breathe. You can breathe uh-huh. into your chest, like you said. Uh-huh. And that is like well, the anxious no visual, breath. But... You don't get enough oxygen. Uh-huh. You'll see if people are not in their their nervous mm-hmm. system is not regulated since you pulled the nerve. I I'm a nervous system nerd. So yeah. that's like that fight or flight type uh-huh. breath. And then we have the belly breath, which a lot of people talk about belly breathing as like the relaxation breath, but actually we, um, the belly breath is also 
plunging a lot more pressure down into the abdomen uh-huh. that's needed, which like during pregnancy is already a lot of space. And then the third way to breathe, which is the best way to breathe for your core and your pelvic floor mm-hmm. is a three-dimensional rib breath. So yes. all you want to do and everyone at home, just take your hands and place them around your rib cage, or you can even like put a strap around your rib cage. And then all you're going to do is you're going to inhale and you're going to feel your rib cage expanding. And this is why the rib cage actually expands during yeah. pregnancy and why I tell people throw away their tight bras, because if your if your rib cage is too tight, think about it. So now, yeah. so you've tried breathing into your ribs now restrict your ribs. Don't let them move. It's and a lot try harder. to breathe. Yeah. And you're going to feel it probably, especially if you're pregnant, you're going to feel it into your pelvic floor. Mm-hmm. You're going to feel too much pressure down on your pelvic floor. So if we can expand our rib cage, and that's one of the reasons why upper body mobility, if you're like, oh, do your Kegels. Mm-hmm. Actually, one, one important component to pelvic floor health is upper body mobility. Yeah. Because if your rib cage can't move, then your pelvic floor is going to take all that pressure that should and- be going into the ribs. And of course, if there's all of that extra pressure and extra weight being pushed into your pelvic floor, it's going to struggle to work. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. especially if it's tight, right? So think about yeah. a trampoline, like it wants to re the pelvic floor is designed to react to that pressure. Uh huh. If it's a tight, it's not, it can't rebound mm-hmm. like a trampoline. And so we want this pelvic floor that ha- has that ability to manage pressure. That's really the pelvic floor's yeah. job is to manage pressure. And if it can't manage it, maybe we leak urine or maybe, mm-hmm. you know, something else is going to happen. Um, yeah. And then it has to react to like a trampoline there. And yeah. then literally during birth, it yields. The baby has yeah. to pass through the pelvic floor. Well, and I would say you can imagine it's really hard to push a baby through a tight space. Exactly. And and going yes. back to that rubber band thing you said, you know, if it's already stretched all the way, it's being pulled so tight. And then we put more pressure on it. It's not going to stretch more. It's going to snap. Yeah, exactly. Which is a very... Yeah. Yeah, no, I say that out yeah, loud. Exactly. That was not a very nice way of saying. That. Yeah, I mean, pelvic but it, well, it I, encourages that tearing. And on the flip side, stuff. those on the flip side, you know, if you've already had a baby, you probably have a weaker pelvic floor, and then that comes with a whole host of other problems too. It's just finding that middle ground and that balance. Yeah, and I will say, people think after they give birth that their pelvic floor is not tight. Now it's loose, and yeah. that is not what how our body doesn't like hang on to loose. Like our muscles are not just flopping in the wind in our body. So our body, honestly, the pelvic floor's reaction to some of the trauma is to tighten. Uh Okay. So a lot of people after birth don't have, I mean, they, they're weak, but tight is also weak. Right. So they, they, yeah, like tighter is not stronger. It's just tighter and a tight muscle. Think of that tight rubber band can't Uh react. And now it goes through, you know, childbirth and it reacts afterwards by tightening up. And so, okay. So yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, my pelvic floor is just tight. Cause I haven't given birth. Then I give birth and my pelvic floor is like loose. Uh huh. And it's, that's not, that's actually not true at all. And so a lot okay. of people that I work with postpartum still have hypertonic or too tight pelvic floors. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, so you're teaching me something new. So before we finish up, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, I would just say pelvic floors are important. Uh, yeah, don't absolutely. forget about yours. Um, it's your pelvic floor for your life. And also if you do have already have a pelvic floor disorder of any kind, mm-hmm. I had an incontinence in the past after my first baby and there is hope and there is, um, options for you. I would say that, you know, the re the number one reason that people end up in elder care sooner than they want is incontinence. Yeah. I, this is something you have your pelvic floor for your life. And mm-hmm. so don't think it's not going to be me. Be proactive with your pelvic floor. Yeah, absolutely. And one other thing I want to add is that you and I both just shared stories that we've we've had to work on our pelvic floors, right? I think there's a level of embarrassment there. Yeah, no shame. And there is there should not be any embarrassment. We all do it. And we laugh. I mean, people even laugh like, oh, I've had kids. I, peep, you know, I'll, I can't I know. jump rope. I can't jump on the trampoline. And I'm like, I get it. You know, that's what you've been taught is that's just normal, right? Yeah, um, but common, be. common and normal are not the same thing. Exactly. And so it shouldn't be something we're embarrassed about or afraid to talk about. Like it is what it is. And we should just seek out the help, whether that is in-person work or online through a, a system like body ready method or, you know, whatever in between, you just got to find what's going to work for you. And don't be afraid to go get that help because like you just said, it's going to make a lifelong dis- difference. It's not just now. It's like the rest of your life. Yeah. You want to be able to play with your grandkids and yeah. 
yeah. hike a mountain, whatever it is that you love. You don't want your pelvic floor to limit you. Um, yeah. And so reach out with resources for sure. Absolutely. What a great note to end on. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lindsay. Absolutely. Listeners, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at contact at the natural com. Also, there's going to be links for Lindsay's program, The Body Ready Method, in the description below. So definitely check that out as well. And I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hi, Rachel Manns again. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to and rate this podcast and head over to the natural com to check out our online natural birth education course, birth story blog, YouTube channel, and more.